Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well. Today you're joining me for part two of my preview of Sergio Lara's upcoming circuits for R Factor 2. This is the Evil Surge track, also known as the Surge Lifer. So this track was in use from 1927 all the way through to 82. Uh, I thought it'd be fun today to run the F2 Classics here, but I think that might prove to actually be a little bit of a, uh, an insane decision. We've got 30 cars on the track, four laps to get through, 7.745 kilometers per lap. Uh, AI is set to 108 and 40 aggression. Let's see how we go. Hopefully my Aiden approved racing socks will get me through this. Um, but I think I'll get swamped at the start. Let's see how we go. Okay, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. As we head up to uh, Suki, the first corner. This is a hard left-hander with a you know don't cut curbs either side and then we head famously under the public road and then down towards the forest and as you can see and here uh, Sergio has done a fantastic job with the road feel and force feedback on the circuit uh, I had a quick chat with him and he said that he intends to bring Hockenheim up to the same standards as this from my previous video uh, which I think would be fantastic and you'll see as we head through this section that the um, the patchwork, tarmac patchwork is actually physical objects so you get direct interaction with the car and therefore your wheel instead of it just being a texture on the road surface um, we head down towards Aschenschlag now so it's a sweeping or rather a sliding right hander try and keep it off the grass tons of feedback there heading down towards Siefkin might just ease off a little bit so we actually make it through a lap. More patchwork. Direct feedback there. The cars really kind of fight for a grip through this fast flowing section. And then as we head around the bend here and then down towards Mullenbach, you'll see that there's tons of trackside objects that are just waiting to end it for you. And like this fence. Mullenbach itself has got a, uh, a no cut hard curb here. We head up towards Rasruk, and you'll probably see that with the cars in front, it's a really undulating surface, and the cars kind of float around under you. So you've got to be careful, obviously, where you're pointing the wheel. I think Sergio's done a great job of kind of indicating where the car should be. Obviously, there's no ripple strips or anything here, but there is plenty of um, dirt sections where you know cars would have been. Move to block, nice mate. And then we're heading to uh, Shavakov. It's a sweeping left hander that goes up the hill. So the cars again struggle for grip here and really fight you as you can hear from the force feedback. Head up under the public road again. I'll just drive over these sections of patchwork. Typically you try and avoid that unless of course you were two or three wide. And then we head into uh, Gagangarad, which is the back straight behind the pits, flat out down here. Bouncing off the rev limiter. More patchwork. Into Nordcare. This is the section where you typically head straight on there, around the Nordschleife, but here we take Bettencare, which is a kind of cement patchwork section, which has a different grip and feel to it than the rest of the road. So you kind of come sliding out of there. And that is a lap of the uh, Evil Suit Street. So a 307 for the first lap. Let's see if we can get through four of these. So I'm locking it up there. Coming into suit gear again. That was horrible. Under the public road. Try and keep it on the road surface there. On the brakes. Tip it in. Touch that dirt. So I think you can see just how much work Sergio has put into this. It's going to be released in the next couple of weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and this one's going to be a, um, unlike the Hockenheim, which is a pay whatever you want, this one's going to be seven US dollars. Um, personally, I think it's well worth it. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this track. Uh, I think it would really suit not only these classic 60s um, open wheelers and the tin tops, but um, I think it would also suit some of the modern cars in um, an Enduro because uh, obviously you come down here at night there'll be really no light, night light whatsoever so I think it'd be a very challenging circuit to do an enduro on I 
and you can see just how much work Sergio's put into the surrounding areas here. It really does look like um, 1960s rural Germany. Oh, am I going to survive here? Yep. The surrounding village. Kind of had a bit of a brain fade there. But yeah, the, you can really see the amount of work he's put into this. It really does add to the immersion of driving around here. And even though it's a long circuit, 7.7 .7 kilometres, it really doesn't feel like it because you're, you're constantly on. You're always thinking about how you're going to take the next corner. Um, <laughs> and all of those road signs are physical objects, so they will end your race immediately if you touch them. <coughs> Great road textures. AI seem to handle it pretty well. Oh, messed that up. Oh, I messed that up big time. Oh, wow. Let's get this back together. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Schafferkopf again. <laughs> See what damage we've got. Oh, yeah, fair bit of damage. Down Gigigarad again. Bouncing off that rev limiter. Can't believe I messed up that corner. Oh, bags of feedback from that corner took it too high. Let's see if we can get this back through uh, Bettingkir. I don't think it was going to be easy racing these guys around here. Okay, that's two laps down. As you can see, the pits look really good. Very much that 60s feel to it. The colour scheme. The trackside objects, the cars, the vehicles. The signage, obviously. Oh, oh, just held that together. stick with these guys and maybe make up a couple of spots. <coughs> I think the uh, the GT3s or the GTEs around here would be, would be brilliant. <coughs> Oops, sorry about that mate. no idea how they would have raced around here. I'd have been dead in a matter of seconds. Again, I love the fact that Sergio uses uh, 3D grass. Just really, really adds to the immersion again. You can just see how much care and attention he's put into this track. So I think it'd be well worth the $7 that he's going to ask for it. Um, I will definitely be picking this up. As I said, the AI are handling this pretty well. They're set to 108, so it's giving me a fight. Oh. <laughs> As we head up towards Schafferkopf again. Let's see if we can squeeze through. Oh. Big lock up there. Feel that feedback through the wheel, struggling for grip through that corner, and the same here. You can hear and see that probably. Okay, I'll avoid the tarmac this time. Under the public road. It's running really smoothly too, so 30 cars on the grid, and uh, I'm getting, which you can't see uh, on my screen, I'm getting, uh, at the start I was getting 82 frames per second, uh, and now I'm getting 116 frames per second. And some sections I'm getting around 125 FPS. So um, very well optimised, especially for a large grid like that. Obviously those, uh, those that reading of FPS will change depending on the cars you've got running too. The 
again runs very well on my machine though and I consider my machine to be a beast um, it's a core i7 4770k and uh, a 1070 and it's running a 1440p so um, all performing very well So through Ashen Schlag for the last time. If you look out over the fields there you can see all the detail he's put into the fields around the area. Just makes you want to actually stop and just have a look. Might do a slow in-lap so you get to have a look around. that lead pack it is a long track but um, those guys are going flat out see the undulations there the way the car moves it makes you really you've really got to take some risks on this track to get the most out of it oh. it's not an easy task in this car for the last time and through Gigingarad and towards Nordkir for the last time <laughs> bouncing off the rev limiter through Bettingkir oh <laughs> two cars off wow love it you don't get much more realistic than that. And across the line. Okay, so we might just take it a little bit slower as we head around so you guys can have a bit of a look. Where did we actually come? Okay, so we came sixth. Just do the in lap. It's got the famous dip under the public road there. Great road textures. These obviously dirt patches where you should be trying to dip the wheel. All these spectators watching. So as I said, all the physical road signs, sorry, all the road signs are physical. So if you do hit them, it is race over. We'll have to take a bit of a look at this physical patchwork here. There you go. Just so much detail on the side of the road here. So much work has gone into this, uh, and it really shows. Ashen Schlag, dip the wheel. Do not collect that speed sign. So much feed feedback from the uh, the road there on that dip. Through Siefkin, you can see how much work he's put into the fields, around the area and the hills. More physical tarmac. I strongly feel that this is this is kind of like studio quality work from Sergio this time. Um, I think this is probably the best track that I've seen him produce, whether it's in AC or R Factor 2. Uh, this will be the second or third, depending on how he releases Hockenheim um, for R Factor 2. And I think he's done an absolute bang up job. I love the use of 2D grass. Um, 3D models for trees, yes there is a mix of 2D and 3D um, you've got the haystacks on the right there the changing of road surface, the texture changes it just screams quality this one 
tip the wheel there if you saw there's a little bit of moss on the road surface as well <coughs> up to Shafakop for rather the turn before. So this is all set to full detail as well on my rig so even a full detail on a rig that's not high end or top end, I call it kind of mid-range now, um, it's it's performing really well and this is with me recording as well. So we head up, up the road now, under the public road again, over this little lip now you have to hit that right because it will actually spin the car out there if you don't hit it straight. Down the back straight. Gagingarad. And then a little bit of um, road patchwork again. Right before you've got a break. Which makes it even more difficult as you head into Nordkir. And then change down and into Bettenkir. Onto this extremely slippery surface. Just bags of understeer there. Understeer, understeer, understeer. You cannot accelerate until you're straight. And then again here too. And then into the pits. And that was it, guys. Um, I'm super impressed with this track. If you, if you hadn't picked up on that, uh, well worth the purchase, in my opinion. And if Hockenheim is brought up to this standard, so and it's going to be a pay-what-you-want track, then that's a no-brainer for me, too. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, <laughs> the notification bell, and I'll be sure to upload more content soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.